we to introduce our first speaker, uh, Mr. Pradeep Khetan. So he is uh, very experienced in uh, in supply chain management right from the beginning, maybe for about 25, 30 years. I, I cannot even remember uh, from where when he is active in supply chain. He is the Apex uh, trainer, a master trainer at the global level. He is a practitioner and also help organizations to achieve supply chain excellence. Okay. So I would like to invite um, uh, Mr. Uh, Pradeep Khetan uh, to begin his lecture with a brief introduction from your side. So we are late by five minutes, no problem, because it's a first session. So uh, the, the people get started. So uh, please, uh, Pradeep Ji, please you can introduce yourself and uh, start the session and uh, we will take it forward. Sure, Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh... As uh, Mr. Uh, Abdul Khader has uh, in introduced you about me, uh, uh, I started my journey uh, somewhere around '97, and that time I was the part of uh, Epics activity in India, and I was the front phase of Epics uh, in India, and after that, like uh, 2012, uh, like uh, when I joined the uh, Epics activity, that time like. Uh, Supply chain was uh, nothing but it is. It was uh, uh, basically I can say production planning and then uh, inventory planning and inventory management. So all this uh, thing was there. But then uh, slowly, slowly the phase of uh, supply chain change, and then people they talk about the procurement as a part of the supply chain. I remember like uh, around two thousand nine or two thousand ten. A lot of companies they change the name of their procurement department to supply chain department and then uh, that time i joined the ism ism is another body in the us and it is the oldest body in uh, supply chain management and particularly they are taking care of uh, procurement and uh, supply chain management and uh, now currently i am uh, heading the western zone for uh, ISM in India. Okay, so that is my introduction. I trained uh, around like more than uh, 50,000 people in diversified industries. Few of the industries are uh, here I mentioned. And uh, I like the certification programs which are offered by Epix, ISM and uh, other uh, US based body. So I did all the certification program because I, my uh, thinking was like, uh, if you want to be a part of the supply chain in the industry, then you should know the supply chain very well. And that's why these certifications are helping me a lot. That's brief about me. So as I say, like uh, supply chain is changing the phase uh, from time to time. Uh, if you remember like uh, 1970s uh, when MRP came and people they were very happy like uh, some uh, tool is they were available and now uh, they can do all the activities of materials uh, planning and all through the system. But after that like uh, people they realize even uh, MRP is there and they can get the, all the benefit. Why not to get the benefit uh, more than that? And that was the era of like uh, when we say like uh, multiple dysfunction was there in the supply chain industry. Like uh, any industry you can say, uh, most of the companies like uh, they were the owner driven company. All their activities were impulsive. A uh, lot of pep talks are there, trades are there. So uh, like it was like uh, everyone was uh, using their power to get the work done. And that was a time like when uh, demand was very high and supply was very less. So no competition was there. And, uh, just uh, benefit was like if uh, somebody is uh, producing, you can sell the product. Slowly, slowly, like uh, then people they realized he can we make uh, each department as a, like an independent department and we can uh, develop the department. So then uh, second stage of supply chain uh, came and uh, they talk about semi-functional enterprises now in this case like uh, yes every department was working very well but uh, 
every department was thinking their own uh, benefit. They were not talking about the benefit of the organization. They were talking about the benefit of their own department. Like uh, if suppose you have to do training, uh, they were talking about training for my department only. If you say like uh, reduce the inventory, they say, okay, I will reduce the inventory for my department. That was the era. But then uh, people, they realize, uh, can we have a better integrated software where we can uh, in, uh, combine the material requirement uh, activity along with finance, along with uh, production plan, along with uh, other activities. So then they came out with the MRP2. MRP2 was like an extension of uh, MRP, but it was like a broader term and it uh, was like a manufacturing resource planning, not material requirement planning. And then uh, one step ahead, they came out with the ERP, like uh, where entire enterprise was integrated and uh, the top bosses where they were getting the report at the central location. So central server was there and it was a client server based uh, infrastructure was formed. And uh, then uh, people, they realize, okay, uh, my company is a very well organized company, but if I have to uh, take care of my customer, I have to integrate my supplier, I have to integrate my tier one, tier two customer also, so that I can uh, fulfill the requirement of end customer, who's the consumers. And that's why like, they talk about the extended enterprise. So they try to uh, integrate all the partners in their supply chain management. So before extended enterprise came in picture, people they are talking about there will be a competition between one company to another company. But when extended enterprise came, people they used to talk now, uh, there is a competition between one supply chain management and another supply chain management. They are not talking about the two entities, they are talking about the two supply chain management. Okay, so if you see like uh, the definition of supply chain management as per this uh, activity stretch from raw material to consumer including various entities. So like uh, broadly when we, we are talking about the supply chain management, we are talking about uh, four types of flow. One is the flow of material which is flowing from uh, supplier to customer. Another is the flow of uh, fund which is moving from uh, customer to supplier. Third is the flow of information which is going in both the direction. Like example, purchase order is a form of information. So purchase order is going from company to their supplier. Okay. Similarly, like uh, invoice. Invoice is uh, coming from the company to their customers. So these are all the information they are talking about. And fourth type of flow is the flow of uh, material from customer back to the supplier. And that happens like uh, when there is a, like a return, so it can be for reuse, it can be for refurbish, it can be for faulty items. That is like a talk about the reverse logistics in terms of logistics. So this is the four uh, different flow of uh, in the supply chain management. And uh, one thing is very clear key supply chain is global supply chain. Now, whenever we are talking about supply chain, it is global supply chain. We are not talking about the local supply chain. We are always talking about the global supply chain. And that's why like uh, if there's any change in the global market, it is going to make impact on local market also because all supply chains are interrelated. Uh, now, uh, I thought like uh, so in my, uh, sometime uh, when I'm going to the organization, the people they are talking about, okay, we have to design our supply chain. Can you uh, give us idea about uh, our company's uh, supply chain? So I'm asking them like uh, first to find out which particular industry you are. So like uh, in supply chain, four parts are very important, supplier, manufacturer, and demand side and for this IT infrastructure. These four uh, things are very important for them. 
Now, IT infrastructure, we can say like uh, it is now uh, get converted into technology based supply chain management. The four different types of supply chains are there. Now, take example automobile industry. Now, automobile industry is uh, an industry where uh, planning is very important. When we are talking about planning, we can talk about the manufacturing planning, production planning, and that's why like uh, Production planning is in the center of the supply chain and around that they are like moving the procurement and uh, uh, sales demand and uh, IT infrastructure. Similarly, like if you talk about uh, uh, cement industry, like any uh, capital based industry, that industry is driven by the purchase based uh, supply chain management. So there, Purchase is very important because a single, uh, uh, like, uh, like, take example, of, uh, one percent, uh, you can reduce in purchase cost. The impact on uh, balance sheet is very high. Okay, so they are the industry where like uh, purchase is very important. So they are talking about like purchase based uh, supply chain management. Third is like demand based supply chain management. Like, take example, uh, nowadays we are talking about uh, HUL. We are talking about Nescafe, this uh, like Nestle. All these industries are uh, demand-based industry. So they are like a, a supply chain is driven by the demand, and around that like uh, the whole uh, system is built on the basis of that. And fourth is like uh, some industries are there which are uh, logistic-driven industry. Like take example, uh, if suppose you are talking about cement industry, like cement industry, uh, entire industry is driven by logistics because like uh, if suppose uh, two three days the inventory is lying in the factory, then it will consume the entire uh, space of the factory. So their logistics is, should be very effective and very efficient so that the material which they are producing that can be continuously moving from the factory to the customer so depending on that like you have to think about like uh, which type of industry my industry is and which type of supply chain my supply chain should be now you suppose like you say like uh, supply chain management how it should be so like uh, as i say like a uh, uh, very important part of supply chain is the planning now, uh, there should be a good planning for uh, logistics, good planning for uh, procurement, good planning for uh, demand, good planning for production. So everywhere like uh, planning is very important for the success of supply chain management. And not only for the our company, but also the planning of uh, tier one, tier two suppliers, tier one, tier two customers. So for uh, simplification, I can uh, talk about the only one company which is a, like a centralized uh, company in the supply chain, which can be also considered as a master in the supply chain management. Let's take example HUL. Now, if you talk about the supply chain of HUL, who is the master of uh, supply chain? HUL is the master of supply chain. Similarly, if you talk about uh, any uh, automobile industry, the automobile industry is the master and all other tier one, tier two, customer and supplier, they are the part of the supply chain management. So here like uh, in this uh, supply chain, uh, the upper part is talking about the integration of uh, all the players and uh, vertical part is talking about in one particular company, how the whole planning system is working so that they can uh, make their supply chain effect. So like take example in, uh, this uh, example uh, is like about uh, one company where the whole uh, planning system starts from sales and operation planning. It is a volume level plan, okay? And uh, we are going to like uh, get input from demand management team and we can validate the SNOP, sales and operation planning through resource planning. Next level is like a master production schedule, which is the mixed level plan. Okay, and uh, we are getting the all the requirements from demand planning team, and also we are going to validate it resource plan. But here, resource plan is not a complete resource plan. It is a resource plan for key resources. 
and below that the next level is uh, detail uh, material planning or we can talk about the mrp okay and material requirement planning we can do and after that we can uh, take care of the detailed capacity planning like the capacity planning of each and every uh, machines each and every work center okay and then we can talk about like uh, if suppose we are making the product in house then we can talk about the shop floor management and if suppose we are uh, purchasing the item then we can talk about the supplier procurement system So, uh, as I say, like uh, planning is very important in, uh, in today's condition. So, like the example is uh, I'm talking about the sales and operation planning. Now, SNOP is like a volume level plan. And uh, generally, like uh, in most of the companies, the planning horizons are like uh, typically uh, when they introduce this SNOP practice around like a uh, uh, 99 uh, 2000 that time like they were talking about okay we can uh, keep the planning horizon as a one two three years why uh very long uh, planning horizon was required because uh, like if suppose you are talking about like my volume level plan is uh, x and suppose uh, i'm uh, talking about after three years my volume level plan should be 2x so if suppose you want to make uh, x to 2x what level of uh, production is required and for that all uh, capacity is available within the organization or not if there is no uh, enough capacity then uh, we need to create the capacity or a resource and for creating the resource or capacity we need time that's why they're talking about the planning horizon as a one two three years okay but nowadays like a lot of uh, industries uh, they say like uh, one to three years is not a uh, good planning horizon for me because like uh, we don't have enough uh, time for that. So better like uh, we can uh, reduce the uh, planning horizon. Like take example in uh, mobile industry, mobile phone industry, the planning horizon is uh, not more than uh, one year. Because uh, in three years they are uh, making three, three, four more models. So they say like uh, we will make the sales and operation planning for one year only. And uh, they can establish their capacity within one year. So depending on like uh, which type of industry you are, how much time is required for uh, getting the resources, you can decide your planning horizon. Okay. Typically uh, five steps are very important in uh, SNOP. Uh, like, uh, I see like uh, many companies now they are talking about IBP integrated business planning, but unfortunately uh, they are not having the SNOP in place. So without SNOP, you cannot implement IBP because IBP is the extension of SNOP. Now, uh, is it very difficult to implement SNOP? No, it is not very difficult. Only thing is like uh, it requires a lot of discipline and lot of planning in place. So suppose I'm uh, going to implement SNOP in my organization. I can start with the uh, data gathering. So like if suppose last uh, month, my sales are there. So I have the sales figure and then I can uh, have an uh, idea about like uh, how much uh, sales I lost in last month because of like uh, maybe unavailability of the product and all. And then uh, what is the trend in the market how much more demand is possible in the market and basis on the basis of that i can make the demand plan so i can collect the data from the all the departments i can use my own uh, analysis and i can create my demand plan once my demand plan is ready i can uh, send the demand plan to supply team or operation initially they are talking about uh, operation team now they are talking about supply team so like uh, they can uh, talk about okay uh, they, whether they can make the product on the basis of demand and also like they will check with their supplier where the supplier will uh, able to supply the raw material and components depending on the demand level okay 
and if suppose uh, there is an agreement between demand planning and uh, supply planning they can say yes and we, they can uh, go for the next level if there is a, some conflict between these two department then there is a, another step is there which is pre snop meeting so like uh, where uh, demand people supply people hr people logistic people they all are coming together they are discussing about like uh, what are the issues and they were trying to like uh, uh, make the uh, arrangement between the two parties now pre snop meeting is very important part of the snop and uh, generally like in uh, companies uh, higher middle management people they are the part of the pre snop meeting okay like uh, head of the mid, mid management they can be the part of the pre snop meeting and they can uh, identify like a solution for all the problems now only the problem like uh, which is not solved <laughs> like a uh, example you suppose i am talking about uh, i want to this type of demand now to fulfill the demand i need particular type of resources and resource required investment of money now this uh, type type of decision is taken by not pre snop meeting but they can uh, write in the paper key we can take it uh, into executive snop meeting and which is the last step in executive snop meeting like uh, all the critical uh, points they are coming in picture and all the uh, department heads and ceo of the company they can sit together and they can uh, take the solution of all the problems okay so like uh, if suppose i am taking simple example of car car manufacturing company because everyone can uh, relate this car manufacturing company to easily so in car manufacturing company like if suppose i am talking about uh, three type of car one is a small car another is a medium car and third is a large car so in snop meeting they are talking about how many small cars they are making how many medium cars they are making and how many large cars they will make okay now uh, next step is about the resource planning you identified your uh, sales and operation planning but then you have to uh, validate your uh, this uh, snop with the resources in your organization now basically like uh, all the resources are main money material machines methods are all all these resources we are checking uh, and we can uh, confirm like uh, whether resources are available or not if resources are there we can uh, accept the snop and we can go ahead if resources are not there then what is the step we have to again uh, balance the snop with resources okay now uh, for resource planning uh, we can use the various type of uh, bill of resources i have seen like uh, in many industries like uh, they have their own bill of resources and uh, through that they can calculate the resource requirement and the, how much resources are available with them some companies they are talking about the demonstrated resources some companies they are talking about the calculated resources but generally like uh, in resource planning we are using the demonstrated resources okay demonstrated resources are like uh, the resource which is available in the company and uh, they are talking about in, uh, in the past performance what type of resources are available then say uh, once like uh, this uh, volume level plan is ready now uh, i will tell you one thing like uh, in last uh, five years i have seen uh, around like 60 70 com companies and uh, everywhere like uh, this uh, snop was missing 
and then they are talking about uh, we can uh, use all the new technology iot and ai and all this and we can expect a good result from this no no it is not possible because uh, unless until slop is in place you cannot get the result in supply chain management and uh, the outcome of uh, slop process is like uh, if suppose uh, you are talking about the executive meeting the outcome of meeting is like uh, uh, you can get the final uh, sales plan final production plan final uh, purchase plan final logistic plan distribution plan all these plans are coming out for the output of the executive meeting and that plan is uh, signed by all the department head now next level of uh, planning is uh, master scheduling uh, again master scheduling is the process and uh, for master scheduling our input is coming from the sensor operation planning but in sense of operation planning the it is coming out typically from production plan because like uh, production plan is a direct input to the master schedule along with that uh, we are also getting the input from demand plan because like uh, suppose uh, we are making master scheduling for individual item now again i am taking our example of car this is i am talking about uh, the model a of the car so then uh, we need to understand the demand for the model a so we can do the forecast we can have the customer order we can uh, use both this and we can get the demand plan we can get the distribution plan because distribution plan is very important uh, whatever we are making we are shipping to the distribution channel and logistic plan because like uh, logistic is one of the important ingredient of supply chain management inbound logistic and outbound logistic so we have to make our uh, logistic plan and logistic plan is the input for master schedule okay and what is the outcome of master schedule master production schedule okay again uh, as a world class practice most of the companies they are using this structure and they are getting the benefit like take example uh, hindustan unilever they are following this uh, practice okay and uh, again we are checking the capacity requirement at the master scheduling level and here we are not talking about the, all the resources but we are talking about the critical resources now what is the definition of critical resource the resource in a sense of which uh, you can uh, not uh, do the production that is called a critical resource so we have to go and check all the critical resource required whether they are available or not if not available make them available and then you can go for the master scheduling again okay next level of planning is uh, mrp material requirement plan uh, yeah most of the companies they are using this uh, mrp system uh, but unfortunately uh, companies they are not using uh, like uh, not all the companies but i am talking about uh, good number of uh, companies are there which are not using the formal system for their uh, material requirement planning they are using their informal system like uh, all the department people they are using the excel sheet and they are having their own data and they are doing the parallel system in the organization but uh, yes they are working but uh, that is not the best practice the best practice is like you can follow the system okay yeah. and uh, then we are seeing the detailed capacity requirement plan again uh, when we are talking about detailed capacity plan we can talk about the capacity of each and every work center what is my available capacity what is my required capacity what is the gap in the required capacity to available capacity and how to fill the gap again like uh, people they are going through the like uh, demonstrated capacity or rated capacity like here a lot of companies they are uh, preferred to go for rated capacity because the like, capacity is changing continuously okay 
and then uh, the execution part and uh, checking the input output control and order sequencing is a little lag. So like basically we can talk about the entire this uh, framework and we can mm -hmm. talk about the what is my prime concern in planning, what is my resources, what is my execution plan and how to check care, take care of the resource in the execution part. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Pradeep ji. Thank you. Excellent explanation of fundamentals. Uh, I was uh, in 2008, 2009, uh, in that period, I was a sales and operations planning coordinator yeah. as a vice president planning. So yeah. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. Basically, SNOP is not a fancy thing. IBP is something, a technology. I, I, we use IBP, by the way. Okay. Yeah. The thing, the key point in sales and operations planning, as you said, is to balance demand and supply in a real sense. Okay, okay. so uh, actually, you know, uh, the SNOP basically we three were sitting: the CEO, the head of sales and marketing, and myself head of, as a head of supply chain. Okay, okay. so okay. I was taking care of the manufacturing, logistics, and uh, everything related. So it's very simple. What was the period? Uh, what was the demand? Uh, actual demand, planned demand for last month? Why the variance is? The reason is the demand side or supply side? To solve it. Yeah. And then you approve the next uh, demand plan for next three months. This is the starting point, and then the, everything will blow up uh, based on that. That was a very simple one hour session. It was really helping everybody in the organizations to get aligned to the strategy. Okay, so, that was fantastic. Okay, so, so very nice. Yeah. So we have like uh, eight minutes there. If anyone, yeah, yeah. If anyone yeah. has any question, we can take the question. Yes, there are some questions. Uh, now, here basically, sir, uh, sales and operations planning actually people are not using it. Only very few people are using it. Yeah. Even in the master production scheduling part, the organizations are now connected, disconnected, like MPS, MRP, these people. So, what is your uh, take on that? So, people are now using a master production scheduling as a separate thing, MRP as a separate thing. They are not using something like an integrated way. Okay. It be is there could be reason because uh, the users are not so qualified or uh, the management is not qualified enough to organize all this. So what do you think? Uh, what is the situation? Anyway, so I will give you one uh, uh, recent uh, case. Uh, very big uh, multinational company was there, and I was there for doing some uh, training for this company. Now uh, all these people, people who are working in the supply chain management team. They were like uh, freshers uh, from the MBA colleges, and they all were like expert in the AI and IoT and all this uh, new. Uh, mm. I, I cannot say like new technology. They I can say new terms, mm. like uh, aware of that. But the I ask them like very simple question. Uh, if suppose uh, uh, you have to do forecast, which method you will use, and they mm. to be blank. Then I asked like uh, why inventory is created in your organization. So they say like uh, for customer service. I say customer service is not related to inventory. Not tell me why inventory is created. Now they are blank. So mm -hmm. the issue is like uh, people they are not following the basic rule of uh, planning. If you are doing your master scheduling separately and SNOP separately. What benefit you are getting? There's no benefit. And then uh, SNOP outcome, you have to uh, uh, reconcile with the MPS income input. So who will do this activity? There's no relation between these two, right? Yeah. So nowadays, yeah. uh, people, they are uh, doing all the activities separately. And then a uh, lot of confusion is there in the system. So instead of that, why they are not going for the simple system and they can uh, extend to their, uh, like a MPS they can make first and they can extend to the level of uh, SCM. Yeah, uh, another question is sir, uh, after all these uh, uh, concepts, uh, 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 after evolving all these concepts, still people use uh, 
uh, reorder level uh, planning for the dependent demand items. Okay, so they use like a reorder level and then safety stock kind of thing. Uh, that of course it is very simple, straightforward. But actually, you know, you definitely will not achieve your uh, your uh, service levels. Okay, with this. Okay, so so you run out of safety. You have a safety stock of uh, stock outs and all. So and they also fix a safety stock as a one one parameter. So what do you think uh, organizations can change here? See, uh, uh, invent, uh, if you talk about inventory and safety stock, they are totally uh, uh, correlated with each other. But the problem is like uh, if you have to decide about which type of reorder point system you have to use. Now, as you say, like a uh, reorder point is like a very old concept. Now, a lot of new concepts came in picture. So why unnecessarily we can go for the old concept and uh, use it? It is like uh, some old uh, minded people, they are continuing mm -hmm. because they don't want to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and management is, a, is not aware. Yeah. Management is not aware of the best practices. Absolutely. So that's exactly the point is they just go what people are saying. They say we are experienced. Don't really see what is the best practice. Okay. See, so that, that's the idea. Reorder point is good for uh, independent demand, not for independent demand. demand. Dependent okay. demand, uh, no way. Does not work. Does not work. MRB does not work, but still people use that. But still yeah. people use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. MRB is the only solution for that. Mm. Exactly. Now, people they are talking about demand driven MRP and all these new concepts came. So, better is uh, go for that. But uh, otherwise, like, see, you have to very uh, clearly segregate which system is working for uh, uh, independent demand, and which system will work for the dependent demand. Mm -hmm. People they are interchangeably using the system. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, uh, uh the demand forecasting part so people are more uh, uh, worried about uh, the uh, the forecasting technique what kind of forecasting technique it is kind yeah. of thing but which forecasting technique is really applicable for that particular product line or particular product group people don't uh, worry about it okay so how does that uh, can change uh, what do you, what is your advice to the business heads in this See, to change i remember like uh, in one fmcg company when i was there uh, there were around uh, 70 people uh, sitting in uh, one uh, like this uh, forecasting department and they all were doing forecasting. So I asked them like uh, why this, this many people are required. They say like uh, in our organization, we are uh, doing the forecast for each and every item for each and every area. Mm -hmm. We are doing the mm -hmm. global forecasting. So like you suppose I am doing the forecasting for product A for India, my forecast mm -hmm. is different. When I am doing the same forecasting for the product A in US, forecasting is different. But their demand uh, pattern is different. So that uh, level of uh, in depth is required, which is not uh, unfortunately possible. Uh, uh, like uh, in India, people they are taking forecast as a very uh, easy task, but it is not easy task. It is the toughest task in the organization. Mm -hmm. Because the planning and forecasting both are same. Because planning we are doing yeah. for the future. And forecast also we are doing for the future. And future is unknown. So we are doing for unknown. Perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. Yeah. So another one for one question uh, we have seen is the, the capacity planning part. Okay. A capacity planning of part is very, very uh, informal uh, in, in, in the country, at least in India. Okay, so people don't really do capacity planning at all. Okay, what I what I see. So uh, at least they should be able to do a rough cut capacity planning. Okay, yeah. as you said, the yeah. bottleneck operation where uh, this operation will decide uh, your capacity. At least you should have a, like some kind of rough cut capacity planning to to decide on your throughput. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice in this for the organizations? Yeah. See, uh, I will say like, uh, yes, you, you are absolutely right. Like uh, RCCP is minimum required. But at the same time, like if you are doing the resource planning first and then RCCP, your RCCP uh, uh, requirement is much lesser because you already done the resource planning for all the resources. 
And similarly, like when uh, we are talking about CRP, capacity requirement planning at the MRB level, we have to like, uh, that with time, every day something wrong is going to happen. So capacity is going to get impacted. So to take care of that uh, capacity, we, we need to do the capacity planning also. So uh, if you like a uh, complete uh, structure, you will follow. I say like uh, your uh, problem will be vanish at least 90%. 10% is like uh, inbuilt in the system. So you, anyway, you have to bear the that 10% problem. But 90% problem you will uh, at least uh, get relaxed. Perfect, sir. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so thank you. You just uh, uh, gave a very high overview of how the supply chain management evolved and what are the key milestones in supply chain uh, domain. Okay, so and then you have given very fundamental concepts because uh, fancy things you can get it anywhere. The fundamental yeah. concepts are something which is very critical. So I, I think organizations uh, will uh, take your words and then put the fundamentals in place. 